started today. So that's what's meant by that phrase. Uh, we're going to dive into today's Photoshop Masterclass. As you can see from the title, colors, patterns, excuse me, and uh, gradients is the plan. So uh, hello, everyone. Good to have you here. And uh, this is going to be fun. So essentially kind of turning any sort of normal photo into something spectacular using those three things. And we're going to use some geometric shapes uh, as well. So uh, especially, so basically the short of it is if you feel like you're kind of in a box with Photoshop, you don't know what else to do. It's not all about just compositing, putting wings on a lion, right? Uh, there's so much more it can do and this can help you kind of break out of the box and uh, just create some new looks for you. Uh, can I see you? Wait, hold on. Let me see. Oh, there you are. Hi. Oh, Mallory. Oh, I see you now. These glasses that are fake. All right. So, uh, again, I thank you guys for hanging out with me. Um, if you just give me one second. I got a ton of things going on over here. Just want to clean this up a little bit. And then we'll get started. You can see here's my screen. Bam. There we are. Uh, we're going to be using Photoshop. I'm going to show you some quick tips too, by the way, because uh, to be honest with you, um, sometimes you'll like have a bunch of photos that you might potentially want to use, right? Look at all these photos. It's like, ooh, it'd be cool if I used this one or this one or this one. So an easy way to get started with some of these uh, is two different ways. I personally like to use Bridge, okay? Because Bridge allows me to see all of those photos just much easier. So here's Bridge. Go ahead and stop from Creative Cloud. Uh, go to, in fact, you could always take that folder. I drop it into favorites usually. There it is. Here I can see all the images because I want to kind of start with a cool background and potentially something like this. Right? That's really cool. And uh, we get to have fun with this curve and some other elements in here. But I'm not 100% sure I want that one. So I'll select this one and this one. Let's grab some good images, huh? Let's do it. Let's scroll down a little bit. This one's nice. Uh, this one could be cool. This one's cool. So many cool images. We're going to have a lot of fun today. And uh, I hope this day finds you well. Right? Look at all of these. So many amazing images. Uh, some are from stock, some are from Unsplash. Probably a lot of these are from Unsplash. They're my Unsplash folder. Uh, but I already have my Adobe Stock images in um, my Creative Cloud library. So that's why I'm not really sweating that one. It's just these other random images that I end up with on my desktop. Okay, so selected a ton of images, so many of them right, that I want to use in my uh, composition. So uh, with that being said, I keep on finding more and more cool ones. Wow. I don't know if you guys have libraries like this. Just a ton of crazy stuff. Yeah. And what do we do from here? We go to Tools, Photoshop, and right in here, Load Files into Photoshop Layers. Uh, how do you get Bridge to show you full-size images? Just hit the space bar and we'll preview full-size. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, and by the way, yes, Mia, it's a great way to just kind of present your work, um, honestly, is what I consider. I just love being able to kind of present just some files in a very clean interface. Uh, when we do creative jams, this is how I actually display a lot of the images because it's a super clean interface, right? You can control the background color and all that fun stuff. But mainly I use it for this, load files into Photoshop layers. What happens? It's going to launch Photoshop and take those files and we just get to sit back and watch it do everything and uh, we just sit here and drink a LaCroix. Yeah, Sean, you can stay with Lightroom Classic. Perfect. Totally fine. You know, Bridge has been around forever. Uh, that's a good point. You know, if you're using Lightroom Classic or Lightroom, uh, a lot of times people, that's what people will use. Hello, Andrew. Good to see you here, buddy. All right. Another Photoshop day. All right. Cool. You got it. That's all done. Bam. Right. Everything is loaded in. Command zero. We can see everything. We see all these crazy names for these files as well, right? All the way down. But I'll usually select a lot of them or select all of them, S align horizontal, align vertical, right? Just so I can get this sort of the way I want it to, 
at a starting point. But here's another thing that kind of annoys me too. Right over here, look at all these crazy file names. Crazy file names over here, so many of them. Really, I'm just making a background, right? That's all I need to do. There is a way to go through, and uh, if you just double, double, uh, double click to rename a file, you can say background, and then you can hit tab and go to the next one, background, tab, background, right? Still gonna take me forever, right? Wouldn't it be nice if I could select all of these and change them all? I wish there was a shortcut key, and there is not, unfortunately. Uh, luckily for us, and again, this is a master class, so we can go ahead and trick out Photoshop. Um, yes, Pam, you've been uh, working with Adobe products for a while, so you've been working in Bridge longer than um, uh, Lightroom. That's probably goes for a lot of people, so that's awesome. So there are basically uh, scripts that you can add to Photoshop. Here's one, uh, Layer Renamer. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. This is just, this, this actually script can be even a little bit better, but I'll paste it into chat. And uh, again, thank you everybody for, jo for joining me elsewhere as well. Um, and everything. All right. So I'll paste this into just that chat. There we go. All right, so uh, this will kind of allow you to, and these are how scripts work. Basically, you download them, you put them in a scripts folder, right? That's what you do. Boom, download. There it is, downloads that file. Where is that file? Let's show it in Finder, right? What do we do next? Well, we've got to go ahead and find out where the scripts folder is, which is actually in your applications, Photoshop, presets, scripts, right? And this is where we drop it, right? Pretty straightforward. Here it is, bam, bam. I've already done that, by the way, but you could easily follow those instructions on that page, right? The thing about scripts is sometimes they're actually loaded right in here. This one, you actually have to, everything appears under scripts right down here, okay? Um, and I did restart, so it should be here, but nonetheless, you could always browse to the script that you just found. So this is what I'm gonna do. I have everything selected. I'm gonna select open. It's gonna say, hey, you wanna go ahead and rename these uh, 32 layers, background, replace the current names, click okay, and everything is named background. So that's what scripts do, and now you understand. And now we're at a starting point. Hopefully that's okay. I only have an hour, so I'm gonna get moving on this. Uh, Chris Olson, hello from sunny Colorado. Same here, that's where I am at. Uh, do all those images overload the system? No. All it's doing is kind of doing a copy and paste, right? So that's all it's doing. This file will be large, sure. I'm gonna save this to my desktop. I'll call it, uh, we're gonna make it, we're just gonna uh, call this. It's gonna be a pretty bright uh, comp. That's what I'll call it. Just throw it on my desktop like so. And we could see it save this file. This one actually might be pretty large, right? Because I've taken all of these files. We can always right click. We can do a reveal in Finder. We could see actually down here. Actually, we could do info. Oh, 1.5 gigs. That's huge. That's okay, though. All right, now I get to the fun part of kind of going through and figuring out sort of like which images are going to be my favorite, right? So I'll move them. Usually, I'll move my favorites to the top. So I like this one a lot. I'll move that to the top and go on down the line, right? There's some I probably didn't even need to drop in here, uh, but it's good to have these because you never know uh, where inspiration will strike, which one, which elements you'll take from another one, right? I love this one. Doing this shortcut, the shortcut here to move something to the top, like I love this background layer. Well, I want it to be the number one background layer. So I can do shift, excuse me, command key, <clears throat> Command key will move it up one by one. Command uh, closing bracket, so the closing bracket, okay, so the one that makes the uh, brush larger. But if I hold down the shift key and hit the closing bracket, bam, it puts it right to the top, or bam, puts it right to the bottom, boom, right to the top, right? So that's easy way to just kind of jump layers to the top uh, so you can play with them a little better. All right, let's move on, let's get into this. This one I love too. This is gonna be really fun, right? This one, right? Just having somebody look out onto some. I want them basically to look out onto some big 
awesome geometric shape that takes the lighting from that uh, space, but also um, uh, emits light as well, right? But again, it's gonna, I'm gonna be using colors, gradients, all that fun stuff, okay? Let's move on down. This one might work too. Mm. All right. That one's okay. I have an hour and I have a good feeling that I might actually get a couple of uh, designs done within that time is the plan, okay? So, there we are, bring that one to the top and let's get this started. I'm just looking at all these images. Ooh, this one would be really fun too. All right, that is there, and then we have our toucan. All right, so let's move on. So just because this canvas is absolutely huge, it doesn't mean I have to have my project be this huge. Like right here, I can say, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and crop this, right? Uh, but I don't wanna eliminate all those pixels there, right? So I wanna make sure this is unchecked. When I have the crop tool selected, don't delete the cropped pixels. Come down here and just go ahead and select this image. Hit enter, right? And we can keep those other images and all that fun stuff. All right. Uh, do you prefer EPS files over uh, JPEGs? That's, that's kind of like preferring vector over raster. So, um, I prefer JPEGs when I'm dealing with uh, bitmap type images and then actually Illustrator files uh, when I want to uh, do Illustrator type stuff, right? So right in here, here's my image. Everything else looks good. I'll take these older ones, group them. Command G, boom, there they are. Here's my main background I'm gonna go with. And these are my potential, uh, my potential backups as well. So right in here, I could select this image and I'm gonna do Command J to jump it, right? Then what I wanna do is I wanna select and remove the background ultimately, right? So right over here with that layer selected, if it's a pixel-based layer, remove background. I haven't done it on this image. And uh, let's see what happened. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So this is what I'll typically try. I'll try remove background. In this case, it removed everything, right? Because this guy is actually in the background. Like, it's all one big background. So uh, that didn't quite work out. But what I can do is I can go over here and use my object selection tool. Selecting that, make sure the mode is set to lasso. And then I'll just come in. And again, this is just your quick and dirty way to grab those pixels, right? It'll snap to them. I don't have to do a thing, right? But watch and drink my, my LaCroix in this case. What's up, Kita Jones in the house? I'm doing well, Kita. Uh, any parts that are missed, you can come in and just grab it, right? Right on down here. Grabbing this like so this piece. I could also just switch to the regular marquee tool and uh, select it like I'm doing. Right up here at the top, I noticed it missed this guy entirely, right? So I can still use the object selection tool holding down the shift key, uh, you know, and get a little bit more detailed. See how it snaps to him. We can grab these rocks, right? We can use a refine edge as well, uh, but I need to grab these elements to just give them a splash of color. Okay, like that. And the magic is making that a layer mask. Boop, clicking right down here, we made it a layer mask. Right now it says add vector mask, but that's because I already added this lovely layer mask, okay? So there it is. It didn't quite get everything, as I noticed, like right here. It's like, okay, there's some parts that need to uh, be removed. Well, we can go into select and mask and use our refined edge. Zip. And yeah, that looks pretty good. It was just mainly this tree that had the issue. Click OK. There we have that background. Cool. Zoom out. Here's our guy. Here's our um, 
background, and then we can jump into kind of just dealing with some vector elements and we'll grab some things from good old Photoshop. So let's just take an ellipse. So this is where we'll start. We'll draw out a big circle as we can see right here. Um, cool. How do you uncrop if you change your mind? Ah, Michelle, great question. I don't know if it's been answered by someone else, but this is what I would do. Uh, yeah, make sure you uncheck delete pixels. And then honestly, if you wanna see all those other images, if, you, if I wanted to undo it in this case, is I would go to uh, image and then to reveal all. So reveal all those pixels that are outside of the document area currently. Okay, so that's what I would do. So there's that, that looks good, right? I can go into my um, swatches, for instance. So we made swatches a first class citizen, as I like to say, right? And I can come in and start to pick out these different colors, right? So I have all these colors here. You can see I kind of could jump in, and make something that matches like this, right? See what that looks like. Uh, but also you have legacy swatches you can access as well. So here's, uh, DIC color guide. I'm not going to pretend to know what all these different color profiles are. It's not like I've used a lot of them, uh, but Pantone solid coated. So it'd be, uh, you know, the equivalent of using that Pantone book. Um, but again, you can access those right up here if you really want to like, again, trick out so the swatches, the patterns, the everything, load up those legacy swatches. And then you'll get this, these, all these libraries of uh, colors. Uh, okay, cool. All right, so legacy swatches, bam. I could pick from any one of these and get something maybe a little bit brighter, uh, whatever the case may be, right? I honestly, I don't use these this swatches panel that much, to be honest with you. I, I don't really use it that much, right? I could just as easily just double click on that shape layer right? And then kind of play with the colors in here. And that's what I'll usually end up doing, right? I could always sample if I want it to be part of this scene. I can sample from any of these colors, making it brighter, right? And that's what I'd end up doing. We want to make this bright, like it's going to glow. Like, I don't know, I want to make it like an orb thing. Uh, any typing live events. All right. Legacy swatch is done. It gets more exciting, by the way, Mia. I'm excited about this. There's so many things we could do. Um, right, so we have this element. This is super interesting what happens. Next thing we need to do is we need to load up our lovely gradients, right? Because this is just like a flat image. I'm not crazy about it, right? Gradients, ah, there we are. Here's all of our gradients. If you guys know me, you guys know I like using these gradients because it's just an easy way to get quick change, right? The cool thing is we can start layering colors on top of gradients, on top of patterns, so that'll get really interesting. So right in here, here are my gradients, right? Um, a lot of times you'll have a lot of folders and I've just dumped all these graphic, excuse me, all these gradients into one folder and moved them around. So for all these gradients and swatches and patterns, you can add your own folder and say Paul's faves, right, like that. Let's close up some of those. And then for Paul's faves, I can have my favorites in there, whichever ones they will be, right? So drop them in there like so, okay? I found it easier just to have um, everything very visual and easy to look at right here, because that makes it easy as I go through. It's like click, click, click. Ah, gorgeous, right? We're gonna get some great things from this. I like this one a lot. This one's cool. Anything that kind of has it, it's lighter on the top and, and like transitions to a more subtle color uh, on the bottom there. That is handy, Sig. Good call. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we could talk about that. Capture will make a gradient from your image. Uh, another thing we could do is like, let's go to color.adobe.com. I'm gonna do this really fast color.adobe.com, right in here. So let's just say I don't, you know, I could point my, um, my phone, have the capture app open and point to an image and capture it that way. But I can also come in here and uh, load up or create 
extract theme right here, then I can go to that file. Whichever file you want, I'll just grab this one for instance, load it in, right? And then it captures that, um, that theme just like capture does, right? It does the theme, so we get the color, right? So I could go ahead and save this. And this is the, um, this is just an awesome cityscape. That's what we'll call it. We'll save it to my uh, CC library, but extract gradient. So we can also do that from the browser as well. Oh yeah, capture is in uh, Photoshop Desktop now. Just hit image. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. I actually forgot all about that. And I've done videos on it. And I'm like, oh, I forgot all about it. Uh, so right here, libraries, go down here at the bottom. Uh, capture library design elements. Thank you so much. I can't believe I forgot all about this. Um, if I'm doing this right. There we go. No. Here we go. Create new library from what I have selected. So that's kind of what's happening there. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, it's like I've done videos on this stuff and then I've also forgotten about this stuff as well. So keep in mind, just kind of like what layer is selected. Here we go, create from image, because I was on a pixel, or excuse me, a vector image, uh, vector shape earlier. Create from image right there. And then here we have, again, color themes, gradients. I just did it in the browser. This will do it right directly in Photoshop. Thank you, Sig, man, I forgot all about this. Uh, and then you can start to include multiple color stops as well. So we can save this to the CC libraries. We can go to color themes, right? And start to reshuffle these. So these same options right there were also like in the browser as well. So right in here, extract theme, colorful, bright. It's not that bright, but you get the idea. Let's save those. Save that, why not? I should have smoothed it on save. So that's a lot of detail, but that might come in handy. Uh, yes, so Sig, yeah, perfect. Just make sure you're on a pixel-based layer. Um, you get the idea also for patterns, right? So you can come in and try to make something kind of interesting with all of this like I'm doing right now, right? Rotating is gonna get you something interesting. All right, cool. I like these patterns okay, I swear to you. I have not, I just don't use the patterns. I don't use these type of patterns. I tend to use more line work or something that I've created in, in Illustrator, to be honest with you. But here they all are. We can see that they've all loaded in, right? And we can come in for uh, this ellipse or a new ellipse as I just do jump, right? And change that or change that gradient. There it is, ba -bow. And guess what? Let's make this go from light to dark. Click OK. Let's make sure he's in front. And now we have that fun orb. Yeah, exactly, Sig. We are on the same page. I just don't use patterns that much. What I will use, so let's get into, I need to add some glows to this and different things. Uh, so let's just do this really fast. Outer glow. Sample from that image. It needs to be kind of like a uh, more of a goldish, yellowish like that, let's crank it up, right? And now we just have that nice glow that's emitting like so. From there, let's add a new layer. B for brush, let's change this color to that lovely, um, that lovely like yellow color is what I'm going for. But I can always play with this. So uh, I'm just going to paint on layer one, right? It's actually pretty bright. Take your flow down to about uh, 15. And then we can start to kind of stack that up. But all I'm really doing is just casting some light right on this edge, like so, right? Like that. It's only going to hit in certain parts, right? Some parts might go a little bit deeper right down here potentially as well. This is why I put the flow only on 15 because it starts to trail off, uh, something like that. Then we'll clip it, hold down the option key or alt key if you're on a PC, click. And now we create the, that clipping mask, right? So it's just on 
that layer like so, okay? So kind of move that around. It's not quite realistic, is it? Um, not that quite, quite that realistic. Let's take this layer, and now we need to play with blend modes, right? So going through all of these, uh, a lot of times I'll end up with like overlay or soft light. I like how that's kind of developing a splash of color, but that's the whole goal of this is to really bring something to life with color and patterns and all that good stuff. So that kind of works. That's kind of nice, right? The cool thing is we could do a command J just to jump this and do something else like just a simple lighten and then move this over, right? So I'm actually using just the same layer because I kind of want two different effects. Um, for this. There we go, something kind of like that. Cool. Um, we can do overlay, right? Davika, good to see you. I think you sent me a message on Instagram. Good morning, good to see ya. Uh, I'm just gonna check the time. We're doing great. I've had such a busy week, I can't even tell ya. It's been insane. Uh, but I do want to give a shout out to Jason and uh, the other people that are doing a master class today. Uh, he's at in 30 minutes. Okay, cool. We got that done, right? We have our orb. We have some lighting, right? We can add more with our paintbrush. Hit B, come out here, and just paint actually kind of on top of, and it starts to blur out this edge, but just painting on top of that uh, that particular orb, right? So that's all I'm doing. Looks pretty good, we can kind of move on. We can play with this some more. I'm gonna save this file right now. We'll end up creating a couple of these and I wanna get into patterns as well, okay? Uh, I think in this situation, if I really wanted to make this to look lo like even more realistic, I would probably actually throw some uh, darker colors. So let's sample there and just go maybe a little bit darker and we'll just try this but I'd want to make it kind of like darker on this side, right? And uh, it could actually use a little bit different color as well. I'm not sure how that's coming in on this live stream. Because <sighs> the issue now is this isn't quite tied in with the environment being green as I take a step back, right? We could always fix that a number of ways, right? Because guess what? We have this other ellipse. There it is that we can turn on, and obviously that is just a uh, different color. And again, this is where we get a chance to just play with these gradients. Oh yeah, like that. Kinda into that. Something kinda like that, folks. All right, cool. Let's move on. Uh, more Orby, needs to be more Orby. And it is, it's a lot more Orby now. Um, and we could add more elements to uh, this. So let's go ahead and work on work on something else. Uh, also, before I even finish a piece, because what I have here is I have a design, a Command G to group this. This is design one, where we are playing with colors and gradients. And what I will do a lot of times, just to really amp it up, is I'll try some different color lookups. So it's an adjustment layer, bam. Let's just load these up and see what happens. Okay, there we go. See how that tied a lot of it together? This is the sort of blue and teal color lookup, right? Um, do I do dodge and burn when I do these kind of edits? Honestly, Cody, I do not, just because it tends to be destructive. Um, and I just honestly just don't need to in this case. Sometimes I'll have a soft light layer with gray and then paint on that. Uh, I'll sometimes do a, a dodge and burn at the very last step. I'll sandwich everything down and go through and do a dodge and burn. So on that note, yeah. Uh, let's take a look at some of these. That one's a little much. That one's terrible. Bleach bypass, I'll give you money if you ever use that one because man, it just never gets used. Let's turn off some of these other ones. Ooh, wait, never mind. Let's turn off that one. Uh, so anyways, I encourage you to try some of these. Uh, adjustment layers, right? And you can kind of see sort of the difference that it makes. Uh, it'll sometimes tie colors together and tie together a whole design. Yeah, that's okay. Here we have our orb. We're, it's fine, everybody. Let's move on. 
as I start to go through and select more. All right, that one's good. Design one is done. All right, this is cool as well, right? We could do a Command T. That gives us our transform. And this actually just shows me sort of the size of this, right? It shows me how much room I have to play with, right? So um, again, that's just kind of like a little tip that I'll typically use. I know this is uh, actually a little bit larger. So hey, I have room to shrink it down and uh, get this in make this a little bit more interesting composition if I want, right? Shrink that down a little bit like so. Uh, also, I could take this part right here and stretch it out. Command T, hold down the shift key. Zhoop. Just have that go up to the top like that. All right. We could have some fun with this as well. Command J, we're gonna cut this out, super easy. We'll go into properties panel like I did earlier, right? Uh, we go to remove background, boom, done, right? So now we have those two. Uh, for this one, I can add a gradient on top of it. Now when you add a gradient to a vector, or excuse me, to a um, pixel-based layer, it adds it as a clipping mask. So that's the difference. When I was adding it earlier to my shape, right? It changed the actual shape and we can double click on that to edit the gradient. But right in here, once I add it, you can see it puts it as this gradient fill, right? I can go in, change the color and turn on that background, right? This is going to get a little bit more ugly than it gets pretty, right? It'll get, it'll get ugly and then hopefully I'll salvage it, right? Like that, drop that graphic back there and we could start to play with this a little bit more. Uh, I usually use profiles in CR, the camera raw instead. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. That's a good call as well. All right, let's actually take this and let's say for instance, I just want just a new background that has a gradient on it, right? Anytime I click on a gradient, it's going to apply it to whatever is selected. So what you'll end up doing is creating a new layer and then click on the gradient that you want. So we'll click on that one. We'll kind of turn this back on, right? And now we can play with these different colors. Oops. By the way, notice how each time I select one of these, it's always going to come in as a linear gradient. You could always change that as well right up here, right? saying, hey, always change it to a linear gradient. Hello, Noor. How are y'all doing? Hmm. This definitely is looking very sci-fi. Oh. I don't know, man. I don't know what's happening here. Look at how intense that is. We got a lot we need to change, right? But we can make this look pretty fun. And I'm pretty excited about it. Already this looks this looks uh, pretty good. So let's let's play around a little bit more. Notice for this gradient fill, the reason it's different is I was playing with all these various blend modes, right? To give it some pop. Some other things we could do is actually apply a pattern to it. So we could do some cool things. I have a couple different ideas for this particular project that I want to get into. Let's make it a little, we'll use multiply, right? And it's just making that like a little bit darker. There we go. Cool. All right, we have this element that we could add. We can go into uh, our different tools like custom shape tool. And uh, we can see that we have a number of patterns, or excuse me, shapes in here, right? These are all available to you. Just like we added more to our uh, colors and our gradients, we can um, we could add more to our shapes. Let me show you how to do that. I know I, I know I've shown this before, but let's go to shapes. Here are all my shapes. Just like we added more gradients and swatches, when we go to shapes, we want to add more to it by loading in the legacy shapes. Right? When you do that, you're going to get all these amazing shapes like so. Um, 
and even cooler ones right down in here, right? Legacy shapes and more. A thousand, like so many. I end up using a lot of these, these uh, shapes. They're just shapes in the shapes panel, right? But here, yeah, I could be really hipster about this and bring in a triangle, right? Stretch that out like so. Okay. I could play with the depth of this one. Right, so currently it's behind. I'll put this one in front, add a layer mask, and eliminate this top part, basically. There we go, because we just wanted a little bit of depth here, right? See that? Just wanted to create a little bit of depth. All right. All right, I'm getting to the patterns. Let's get into the patterns now, because I was actually going to apply patterns to uh, this landscape. So let's turn this off. Let's turn this off. We've added in that triangle. Uh, let's go right here. Let's go to the patterns, right? We have all these lovely patterns, as you can see right in here, right? If we add these, it's going to be pretty straightforward and add them accordingly, right? A lot of these don't do me a lot of good, especially these very literal ones. Like these rocks might work, um, but they're obviously too large. So I can always double click on that pattern fill, right, in here and scale this down by at least 50%, right? Something like that. We can see the angle. This is brand new in the latest version, is being able to adjust the angle uh, of this pattern, right? And we can click to click OK. From there, I can add a blend mode to that to potentially get something a little bit more interesting, right? But this is what I actually wanted to do, is you could create anything and make a pattern. So I have these fun engraved patterns uh, that I've created in Illustrator actually, right? So let's turn that off. Let's go to one of these. Click. This is going to make it look like an illustration. And let's let's unclip this. Let's make let's not make it a clipping mask. But this is the pattern. I'm sorry that's hard on your eyes. But right in here, I have all these different like lines. I even screwed up on it a little bit. Do you guys see that? Oh, it's got a little issue right there with that pattern. Okay. But what did I do? I just made this in Illustrator. So I can go into Illustrator. Here we are. Here's some other graphics, too, that are kind of cool. Um, but just go ahead and use the Blend tool. So let's do that really fast. If you want to, here's a line. I'll try to do this as fast as possible, making your own pattern. Let's go to, in, to Effect, Distort, and Transform. Uh, come on, brain. Zigzag. There we go. We want to go to zigzag and we want to smooth it out. So now I can create this fun wavy line, right? I can increase the ridges, but I like it nice and smooth, right? This is the texture I want to apply. This zigzag allows me to do that, okay? I do want to make sure that my, um, wait for it. 11, there we go. Uh, you wanna make, oh geez, 11, there we are. We wanna make sure that uh, the start and the end match up, right? They do, that looks great. Let's increase that stroke. Let's drag it down right here, right? Let's take these two, let's use the blend tool. Bam, bam, right, there we go. We have all of our lovely ridges. We're still gonna have a little bit of a gap there. Okay, just to be honest with you, but this is okay. This gets the point across. We'll go back into Photoshop, paste that in. Sure, why not? Oops. <laughs> ah, whoop, whoop. Copy. I actually didn't even need to do that, but let's paste this in. There's our particular shape like so, right? We can select it. Go to edit, hold on one second. But basically this is where we uh, turn this into a pattern. I'm just gonna quickly select this. It's not gonna be perfect by the way, but this should give you everything you need. With that done, define pattern right down here, right? Under edit, and now we have wavy. 
I've added this wavy pattern. Let's deselect that, turn everything back on. There's that, there's that. Let's get rid of that. And uh, let's just apply it to this blank layer. See, I, I knew I didn't make it perfect. Hopefully, just bear with me. I can always uh, make a new version, but that's essentially how I've made all these, right? I really hope you guys are seeing all that detail because it looks really cool. All right. Okay, looking up now to chat. I'm sorry about that. That took you a little while. Uh, yep, cool. Cool. Um, and yeah, since you guys are looking at my layers panel, I'm going to go ahead and make my layers thumbnail size a little bit larger. Okay, so right over here. And I'll clean some of this up because we're not using everything. We have some of these cool elements. In fact, we'll start to isolate some of these. We have this, we'll make this wavy pattern. That's what we'll call this. We'll get rid of this old pattern. Mm, don't really need it. Don't really need that gradient fill either but now we have this wavy pattern that we can turn on and start to apply places. Let's actually get rid of these other ones. There we go. The nice thing about this is this wavy pattern, since it's really hard to see, we can crank this up like 300%, right, like that. This is why I'd actually originally make things, um, you know, in Illustrator, like have, let them be vector initially. So you could always go back and change it, increase the size, remake that pattern so, uh, so everything looks nice and clean. Okay, so there that is. I'm going to take this down a touch. And I only have, uh, yeah, 10 more minutes. <laughs> Cal, it's no bubble brush. That's funny. All right, this is a cool thing that I actually want to do. I want to uh, create another wavy pattern. And let's just take this first wavy pattern and it's just going to be in the background, okay? Hopefully everybody can see that. We have that lovely wavy pattern, okay? I would love to create a, a wavy pattern that kind of flows over these rocks. I think that would be awesome, right? So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to go, we're going to call this mountain, like so. And let's just turn off this triangle. And I want to apply that at least a type of wavy pattern to it. We'll make it uh, a little bit more intense, OK? Notice how it's hard to see. It'd be better if it was white. Command I does nothing. Haha, <laughs> I was hoping it would do. I was hoping it would do an invert. Oh, brother. Oh, come on. All right, so this will be interesting. <laughs> there we go. That's still a little, a little bright. I'm going to change. So I want a reverse of these colors. So a reverse of my pattern colors. Uh, I can change it to, say, divide, right? So that's what it's currently giving me, and I can make it look a little thinner. So this is even better. See that now? I've taken a black pattern and made it white using divide in this case, right? We could have used the wavy pattern for the koi fish yesterday. Joe, man, you're good. Thank you for following along. That's awesome. Right, issue with this pattern is, uh, again, I want it to be kind of waving over these rocks. I think it looks really cool right now, right, if you're seeing all that detail. Uh, but I can make this a smart object, right, and then really start to mess with it. Yeah, cool, Sig. I, that's what I used. Perfect. We'll use, uh, we'll convert this. This is now a smart object, uh, a pattern smart object. And uh, now we can go into liquify, right? I get it. We could use a displacement map. I'm going to just do this more naturally coming in here. I know it's hard to see, but all we're going to do is just kind of push some of this around and make it look even more wavy. You might not even be able to tell what's going on. I think once I get back into uh, the full 
There we go. We can kind of see it a little bit. Let's click OK. Right, I just morphed this. So see how it's changed this part right here to make it look like it's kind of flowing over those rocks. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Neil. We could use a displacement, displacement map as well. Yeah, again, if I wanted it to follow it perfectly. I like how this is like very random, uh, but a displacement map would totally work as well. The cool thing is this is a smart object. I could decide I need a little bit more fun going on right here. So, oops. Let's go back into Liquify just by double clicking. And right down here, let's push that. Push it, push it, push it. Um, the thing with displacement map is it, it, it'll take multiple tries. Um, if you really want to map, say, text over this, that's when I'd use a displacement map. Right, but it, it definitely takes, say, multiple tries when you use a displacement map. Typically, at least that's, that's my opinion. There we are, we have some more fun waviness. It's kind of fun, right? Yes, thank you, Chris. I like the liquify. It's just like actually just fun to work. Like, yes, I want cool results, but I want to have a good time making this as well. Hopefully you guys are having a good day today and you're having fun and you're being safe. Stretch that out even more. Okay, opacity, that's happening. Uh, by the way, uh, a lot of times people will jump into Liquify and not see the background. Well, you have that under view options, right? We're showing the backdrop. So that's what's happening. Show the backdrop, uh, show all the layers behind, and then we can change sort of the opacity. Actually, that looks even better. I've taken that opacity down to zero. That's so interesting. I don't know why it's standing out, even though I changed the opacity to zero. Oh, that's the before, and this is the after is what I'm essentially doing. Okay, click OK. There that is. It's doing all the things. Uh, all right, Pam. Uh, cool. Good, good. Yeah, I think this is fun. We could. I really want to go even more crazy with all of this. Right, we did, I think this design is good. We can add more to it. I could actually add some fun elements that I have in Illustrator, right? Uh, did you know that like, what? 80% of, like 86% of Illustrator users also use Photoshop, right? So there's a lot of crossover between Photoshop and Illustrator. So I hope that's okay that I do jump in here and grab a fun shape like this one. Let's grab this. Actually, let's change it to white. Let's just see what this looks like. Taking this, dropping it in here as a smart object. And uh, seeing how this looks. That's OK. It's OK. Can we say it's OK? <sighs> Davika, it's heavily raining. Where are you? Where are ya? Ooh, that green's kind of nice. It's a beautiful day here in Denver, Colorado, just so you know. I don't know if this is really doing it any favors, right? It's really not. Less is always more. That's why I typically I'm, I'm stopping a little bit ahead of time, right? And even starting a, a new one within the next uh, couple minutes, we'll knock out a new design. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Wait for it. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Oh, it's a good segue, by the way. I'm going to be going to uh, the Grand Canyon on vacation. So... That's gonna be nice. I leave tomorrow, should be awesome. All right, let's jump in here. I'm gonna do something cool with this. In fact, I just want this bottom part. Zoop, 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 zoop. Grab it, use your lasso tool. That's all I'm doing right here. Grabbing some of this, coming in here. Uh, I figured going to the Grand Canyon is like a good 
good way to kind of like social distance, you know, try to get, um, you know, out of the big city where I'm at now. Uh, if you could call Denver a big city. Mask it, done. Turn that on, like so. Let's take this, let's transform it, right click, fit, flip vertical, maybe put this in a sphere as well. Let's do that. So much to do, so little time. Classic Paul Tranny speed run. <laughs> you know why I do this? I'm like, I'm concerned. I'm like, oh, people might not think this one's good. Well, how about this one? <laughs> right? I do this out of insecurity, right? That's all I'm doing. But now we have sort of this shape that I'm developing. And guess what? Let's go ahead and take. And honestly, just like experimenting. Let's take a more neutral, sort of rosy dusk color like that. Jump that, move that down. Command T, right click, flip, vertical. We're back, turn that off. Wait for it, cross your fingers. <laughs> okay, good. This is good. Okay, now we can kind of move this into place. There we go. Bam. You ready for it? Move this up to the top. There we go. That's kind of what I was... This is what I was going for. Something kind of like that. I don't know. Huh, yeah. Could use a little bit... A little bit of work. But... It was worth trying out. Yes, feel free. That would be great, Mallory, if you uh, if this does inspire you. This is just a very geometric uh, application of uh, just a ge very geometric design that I'm working with. <laughs> that one looks better. I should record all my sound effects. Just trying to make it seem like it's a video game. Okay. But there's our third design. Design one, design two, and design three. I'd say that's done. Uh, by the way, if I want to export out all these, this is what I'll do since I'm down in my last couple minutes. Dot JPEG, dot JPEG, not JPEG, just like that. Okay, and then all I need to do is, since this is saved to my desktop, okay, I'm gonna tweak this some more, but all I'm really gonna do is turn on this generate image assets right here. Zoop, turn that on. When I turn that on, uh, all those graphics will appear in a folder right here on my desktop. Okay, so get ready for that. Let's turn it on. Generate image assets. Wait for it. Boop, there it is, just popped up. Let's take a look at that folder. There we have one, two, three. You get the idea, okay? <laughs> That's his... Uh... <laughs> That's uh, exactly what I did. I had a sphere in every single poster. <laughs> How creative. Oh, look at you, right? I'd want to add more, by the way. I don't have the time down in my last minute or so. But that's why I have all these shapes. It's like, oh, I could have added this. Right? What if I would have added this as a design in there, right? Which would have been a fourth design, which I can always do as well. Pasting that in to our circle, pop, there it is, you get the idea. All right, everybody, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. 
Again, just working with different patterns, colors, and uh, gradients with photos was my goal, right? Uh, and seeing what works good. If something's ever not looking right, step away, come back to it later. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll help out a lot, okay? It's very John Carter-ish, I agree. Cool, cool. Let's do this. Color look up, crank it up, baby. Crank it up, work on those colors and color profiles. You get the idea. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I will post one of these to Instagram, so follow me on all the social medias. It would be fantastic. I'm going to let you go because Jason's... Uh, ooh, he's going to be doing some mixing and recording with plugins, which will be pretty cool. Uh, you did see me actually use a plugin for importing all those photos in the beginning. So, Or excuse me, it was a script. But uh, yeah, a good day using master classes to kind of uh, trick out... Uh, Photoshop and various apps. So thanks so much for hanging out. I'll let you guys go. Thanks so much for watching. We have Jason up next. Thanks so much, everyone.